episode two, defining your perfect opportunity. You have a huge warehouse of skills. So each one of us has a number of things we can do. In fact, research tells us that each person has between 500 to 700 skills. So you feel a bit confused sometimes when you try to figure out what's your best skill. Well, it's because you have so many skills. This is why so many of us struggle with the question, what should we really be doing? So with that in mind, understand you have a set or a warehouse of core skills that you bring to any particular opportunity or job. Now, that stated, you also have what we call best talents. Best talents are your top talents that given an opportunity, and a good match, your skills make the difference and can put the team over the edge. You have certain capabilities that just add measurable value to any team that you play with. I had a college student named Spencer take this assignment of writing the story of you and he came back initially with a draft that was thanking his parents and talking about a few things that drive him like excellence and discipline. But at the end of the day, when I read his story, I really couldn't tell what it was that added value. Yes, he had a list of a bunch of things that are his life experience, but in the end, I really couldn't tell what was his value. And I said, Spencer, can you tell me a little bit more about your life and your experience and what got you into football and you know how you ended up at this particular school? And he said, you know, it really came down to the fact I came from a poor family. And in my family, we just didn't have extra money for football pads or uniforms or even the ability to play sports. So at a young age, I came across an opportunity to sell cookie dough at my school so that I could earn the money to buy the sports equipment I needed to get onto the junior football team. And he said, Elizabeth, I started selling uh, cookie dough and I became the cookie dough king. I could sell cookie dough and support my football camps, my football uniforms, and my dream to play football. And uh, I said to him, how did that make you feel? And he said, so empowered. I mean, it was very special as a, a student to be able to write my own checks by selling cookie dough. And he said, as I progressed through grade school and then into high school and middle school, I started getting more sophisticated. I didn't sell so much cookie dough as much as I did newspaper ads to business owners. And he said, you know, before it was all said and done with, I could sell almost anything. And I said, Spencer, my friend, you are the cookie dough king. That is the story of you. That's how you add value. It's not all this mumbo jumbo. Yes, your parents work hard and yes, they open the door. But the bottom line is you used your skills to overcome fear. And as a young child to go door to door selling cookie dough to get what you wanted. Now, any employer is gonna be really impressed with that story. So what's your story? No matter where you are in life, you have a story that is unique to you that is very beneficial for the hearer to understand what it is you're passionate about, where it is you've been proficient, and where it is you can add profit. Oftentimes, the story of you hinges off some point of vulnerability. So for Spencer, he came from a poor family. Where are you vulnerable? I will tell you that in my story, in the story of me, I am a severe dyslexic. I was one of 12 children that were diagnosed in the early 1970s with severe dyslexia. So part of the story of me, of how I became a relatively good teacher, is because I had to overcome severe learning disabilities. And when I get in front of college students and I talk about the challenge of going to college as a severe dyslexic, and now the joy I have in, in teaching sometimes at college, it's the story of me. It's where I light up. It's where I'm passionate. Where are you passionate? There are downloads on our website, economyofone.com, where you can look at module two handouts and start working on the story of you. Now, as you think about this, you need to ask yourself, what do I really want? 
Jesus said, be it unto you as you believe. And my question for you is, what do you believe? If you were to describe a perfect opportunity, something that's an excellent fit and makes you feel passionate using the skills out of your warehouse, what is it? Have you sincerely thought about this? I want you to take a moment to grab that pen and paper and write down anything you, you, you can about what you feel would be a perfect opportunity for you. So any words that you've got, whether it's in an industry, in a specific title or, or role, I don't know, but write it down. So are you struggling? Have you forgotten about what you're passionate about? Are you so focused on the paycheck that you're retrofitting yourself into job descriptions that are what other people want instead of what you want? This is something I come across frequently and it's that kind of sheepish look when I talk to people about the story of you that they're just like, I don't even know where to start. I haven't thought about my passion in so long. It's been all about the paycheck. So I get that. And I want to give you permission to take a step back and pray for yourself. Pray that God show you where you're passionate. Um, ask yourself, who can I talk to who can help me remember what I really want, what really makes me happy? Let me give you an example of something that is what happens when you don't ask the question, where am I passionate? Where am I proficient? What do I enjoy? When your story is misaligned, so I had a, a titan of industry come to me and say, you know, Elizabeth, I've got a daughter who I'm deeply concerned about. And I said, okay. And he said, I really felt that she should go into nursing because it's just a very good field for her to be in. It seems to fit her skills. You know, she wasn't really decided on what she should do when she went to college. So she became a nurse because it would make me happy. He said, and, and he got real quiet, he said, you know, now we're in trouble though because she has her nursing degree and what she really wants, Elizabeth, is to go to fashion school. And I don't even know what to do with that. And I told him, I said, man, it would have been so productive to have had this discussion with her about her skills and her interests and her warehouse of talent and what she feels her best talent would be before she went to college, before she makes these commitments and these big financial decisions. So I can give you example after example of people who have gone down paths to please other people who have never stopped to ask the question, what do I want? This is an opportunity for you to stop and ask the question, what do you want?